Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of Watts Collection. Uh, today what I want to do is to give the reasons that I have for really not wanting uh, silicon hairsprings in my watches. Uh, I have on, this is one of the first watches I got in as a collector and I wanted one that has wonderful craftsmanship and precision and everything else. And uh, this uh, Patek Philippe Calatrava has more than filled the bill. And it has a Geneva seal instead of the, the newer one by Patek Philippe, but that's another story. Okay, um, we talk about improvement. I'm going to improve something. And I, I was thinking of antiques. Here's a, um, a bowl from the Ming Dynasty, $30,000. And the purpose of buying something like this or artwork or anything else is the skill and the craftsmanship. There's some human hand that did this. They don't do it like this anymore. And to be sure, these things could be knocked out by the millions in a factory somewhere. But that, again, is not why people value them. They value them for the skill and the craftsmanship that went into the original. Now, this is a Rolex uh, Siloxi hairspring, and this is one piece, and it, it's a wonderful hairspring. It's made from silicon, uh, well, Siloxi, silicon and oxygen, and it works wonderfully well. Uh, you can make a million of them. They're all very consistent, and you have this little collet that you just slip on the, on the, the uh, balance shaft, and it works you know, much better than a metal one because it's not as affected by the heat and cold and it's totally non-magnetic. Now, this, this, is a, this is a place in the U.S., in New York, called Firehouse Horology. And uh, how silicon is made, they have these wafers and then they use a lithographic mask and then they have a plasma etching process. Now, I know something about this because I spent so much time working with computers. In fact, I wrote code for a lot of the, um, uh, when I started doing the uh, live video streaming. Now, this was 20 years ago. <laughs> We'd write a little code and see each other and say hi, and that we had no bandwidth to speak of then. It wouldn't last very long. But the thing is, I'm, I'm familiar with silicon and the whole process of it. And... So it's, it's not that I don't like it or not that I don't recognize it for what it is, but rather I, you, once you put it in there, in, in your movement, you can't really adjust it. All right. That's one of the big things. So there's no craftsman can go in there and do anything to it. Now, here are some metal ones. Uh, Ato Kalpa makes them. Uh, a Longa makes their own. Uh, this one from uh, by Strawman uh, Hairsprings by um, Precision Engineer and they're the arm of uh, H. Moser and Son. And they make uh, a lot more than they use in their own watches, which means that somebody else is buying them from them. Same thing with Otto uh, Kalp. Uh, they make them for uh, Vosher, but they make 300000 a year. <laughs> so they're making them for somebody else, too. All right, so these and these are metal ones, and they have, like the Strama is made with uh, niobium and titanium. They work uh, very well, but probably not as consistently well as a uh, silicone one. So if you have two watches and they both have a silicone um, hairspring in it, they probably work exactly the same, the same precision. Now, my watches have personality, some a little slow, some a little fast. I have this FP Jorn that decides to stop every now and then, and <laughs> I, just, I, I start it up again, and it works fine. It just, every one of them has a personality. Had, if they have a silicon uh, hairspring in them, I think they'll, they'll be without that personality, and of course, you, same with the uh, repair of them. And the process, and, and this is one of those quote, it remains the, mo the single most difficult to make component in a mechanical watch, is a hairspring. This is looks like the it was all this all of this goop coming down onto the the making the hairsprings in these fine 
precise it just it's not very easy to do and that's why uh companies like this one by uh, the strawman hairspring is sold to way outside of it anyway so that's that's my whole thing with the silicon hairsprings they're fine if you want them go get them if you want precision get a smartwatch <laughs> let me know what you think and until next time this is bill sanders for watch art side the art and science of watch collection Thank <music> you.